Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is a problem solving 101 video for those people who have purchased the smart alarm conversion unit. Uh, there are some issues that people have encountered when installing these. Uh, normally they're issue free during installation, but there are some common issues that have occurred. And this video is to help people to solve those issues because we have uh, a number of fixes which can help people to fix those problems. So let's take a look at some of these issues then. So the first issue uh, is, is a fairly uncommon one relating to network error messages. But this can be qu quite frustrating for people who've encountered it, so we, we do have a fix for this. Uh, the second issue relates to perhaps only one uh, motion sensor that doesn't seem to be working correctly with the unit and why that's the case so again we've got a potential solution for that. Uh, third issue relates to the, the behavior of the flashing lights on the unit uh, when it's first switched on and uh, whether there's a problem or whether the unit's uh, functioning correctly. And then finally uh, a small issue relating to metal enclosures that may be installed around the uh, housing of the control panel. So normally these are plastic but sometimes they're metal and some of the problems that that can cause. So let's uh, delve into the first issue then and we can, uh, we can have a look at what that uh, can mean and how it manifests itself. So network error messages normally don't occur, but they have been reported typically on the, uh, the Virgin ISP and router, uh, but perhaps on others as well. Uh, so it's only a couple ha happened a couple of times, but uh, typically this happens when uh, people are trying to connect smart things with the device. Uh, it can be on any particular function or only one aspect. So in one case it was generic and in another case it was related to triggering of the, uh, the bell or the alarm. So the, this is normally adjusted by uh, amending some of the UPnP settings on the router configuration. So UPnP is a very clever uh, system that's designed for smart devices to configure, automatically configure some complex and secure routing between the, the host and uh, destination service. Uh, on some routers this is disabled or restricted and really this needs to be switched on or amended. So looking at some of the configuration that might need to be done. Uh, the, the basic uh, gist of this is that on the back of your router you will find a, an address you need to enter into your browser. It's sometimes 198.168.1.1, other times it's 198.168.0.1. It depends on your router service. So if you enter this in the browser address line, it will pop up a, uh, a, a login page for your router control panel. And then if you enter the, uh, the login credentials again, which are on the back of your router. So you need to navigate to a section that will typically be called network or network interfaces or LAN interfaces and look for universal plug and play, UPnP uh, or similar. And what this uh, needs to be set at, basically it needs to be switched on. So UPnP needs to be switched on or selected on. And in addition, if there's an enhanced UPnP security setting, that needs to be switched off temporarily while you connect your devices. You can try and switch it back on after you've successfully connected, but it may well restrict the configuration of the router uh, routing. So it's it's best to switch that off. So you want UPnP on and UPnP ed enhanced security settings off. Uh, there may not be enhanced security settings, I've only seen that on the uh, uh, Virgin routers. So once that's done you should be able to go through the uh, connection again and it should allow the device to automatically configure routings across the smart things uh, via the connected servers. So that, that should now work and that should resolve any network error messages. 
it's also worth mentioning that if you don't encounter any issues with network error messages you don't need to adjust any of your configurations so quite often on the majority of routers this is already set to work because most of the ISPs recognize that people want to use smart devices uh, one of the reasons that some of the particular ISPs who set this uh, do so is for kind of ultimate security if you like cast iron security but the problem with it is that it restricts uh, smart device configuration so it doesn't enable smart devices to plug in and contact a host service and set up some fairly complicated secure routing so in the old days you would have needed somebody to actually configure individual router rules to uh, to set these uh, uh, connections up but your uh, smart devices tend to do these things automatically and securely behind the scenes so let's take a look at our next uh, potential issue so the next issue that people have reported is occasionally one or more of their motion sensors isn't connecting successfully uh, this can just be one or it can be all of the sensors uh, typically it relates to the configuration of the sensors that have been installed so normally our sensors uh, for example Honeywell sensors are pretty much always uh, configured as normally closed uh, some sensors are configured as end of line uh, so this relates to adjusting the configuration of the sensors if required so as I say most sensors are normally closed uh, the, the uh, smart alarm conversion unit works on normally closed or normally open basically the, the two configurations it, it generally accepts uh, so if your uh, sensor is not working please remove the cover so unscrew and remove the cover and make a note using your phone of the uh, wiring and the model number Go to Google and enter the model number and try and find the installation instructions and have a good look at those for some uh, minor adjustments that will be required. No, normally one wire would need to be moved and uh, potentially a plastic jumper within there uh, would need to be reset from one configuration to another so this is a fairly simple uh, adjustment to move your sensor from end of line configuration to normally closed then once you've completed that uh, minor rewiring you can then test see if the circuit now closes when you move in front of the unit uh, by checking to see if it's uh, recognized on the smart things uh, application so once that's complete you can then uh, proceed with your uh, installation so in the event that you can't work out how this should be resolved uh, please contact me and I should be able to advise uh, but please please do try and uh, locate the information yourself first next issue we're going to look at is the, the blue light not flashing when the unit is switched on so I do get a lot of emails from people who say uh, the unit's not connected to Wi-Fi or it's not doing what I thought it would do uh, sometimes people don't tell me where they are in the installation process so please uh, consider where you are in the installation process uh, so have you already connected to Wi-Fi uh, if you have already connected to Wi-Fi please open the connected app and see if the unit is showing us online uh, and then just have a look at how the unit performs so when it's connected to USB or power just uh, press the RST button the very small RST button on the microcontroller and see does the blue light flash continuously uh, or is the blue light flashing a handful of times uh, over a 30 second period uh, or does it flash only once or not at all so typically speaking if it's flashing continuously it's advertising that it's ready to connect to Wi-Fi so this is its normal state when it arrives uh, in the post if it flashes a handful of times and then goes out that typically means it's connected to Wi-Fi so you've completed the Wi-Fi connection routine and it's now ready to move on with the next stage of installation 
If it's not flashing at all or only flashes once, that can mean that the unit's been damaged in transit. This happens occasionally. So just, just put the back of your hand up against the, uh, the silver uh, chip on the top of the unit and see if it's uh, quite hot to the touch. So not, not just lukewarm. Lukewarm is good. Uh, hot to the touch is bad. So if it's hot, uh, it's, it's probably been damaged. So occasionally these units are damaged in transit. Uh, they are also electronic units. So if you run around on high pile carpets with trainers on while you hold these in one hand, you will probably uh, fry the chip. So please do consider that it comes in already packaged in an anti-static bag. So maybe consider uh, where you're handling it and how you're handling it and try and avoid uh, burning the unit out through uh, static electricity. Uh, if the unit is hot to the touch or is only flashing once, that generally means you may have a faulty unit, so you'd need to contact me and I will, uh, if it's, if it's uh, just arrived, I will replace that unit uh, free of charge. However, the key thing here, just to remind people, is to think about where were you in the installation pro process. So have you just unpackaged the unit? Uh, when you plug it in, when it's first unpackaged, please check the original installation unpacking demos. Uh, they, on this uh, site they show how the unit should perform when you first plug it in you should see blue continuous flashing you should see a green power light uh, if that's happening that's normal uh, the unit's advertising itself ready to connect to uh, if you've already completed the Wi-Fi setup and the unit uh, shows a different blue light pattern such so shows uh, flashing a handful of times over a 30 to 40 second period that again is normal, that's your unit can, uh, booting up and connecting to Wi-Fi, so please check in the connected app that it's uh, whether it's connected or not. Okay, so taking a look at the final issue then, this relates to a metal enclosure. So occasionally uh, people have encountered a metal enclosure around the control panel uh, where they're looking to install the uh, smart arm conversion unit. So normally these are plastic or uh, another kind of composite material, uh, which is not a problem. When they're metal, uh, they create what's known as a, a copper cage uh, environment, which means that when the door is closed, uh, it's impossible for Wi-Fi to uh, effectively communicate with the microchip within that unit. So what this uh, tends to show itself as is uh, people have seen that their device is uh, continuously reconnecting or rebooting so they've seen very limited uptime within the connected app they've seen perhaps the unit is uh, connecting every uh, two to three minutes or every 30 seconds what that means is uh, it's it's uh, wi-fi signal is shot because it's been enclosed in a metal cabinet also, please be aware in a metal cabinet that if you uh, use the adhesive to attach the unit, uh, you could short out some of the power connections. You could blow the microchip. So be really careful where you uh, where you attach it. Try and try and use the adhesive to attach it onto a plastic surface or something that's non-conducting, uh, as otherwise you might see uh, a shorting of the unit and damage the unit. So the way to resolve this is to uh, locate your smart alarm conversion device outside the unit, often on the top, and just uh, drill a small hole for the wires through and then your unit will sit happily outside the metal enclosure and converse with your Wi-Fi. So those are all the uh, issues that I was going to run through today. I hope uh, that's been of help to some people and uh, please, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please uh, like the video if you like it and please uh, subscribe to the channel and there'll be more content on here soon in relation to uh, some other areas of interest that people have asked for me to uh, do some videos on. So please keep an eye on the channel and thanks for watching.